So the brilliant developer of virtual desktop, Guy Godin, has already enabled 90Hz mode for the Oculus Quest 2. So you can already play PC VR games on your Quest 2 wirelessly in 90Hz. Yes, this means you can play Steam VR games like Half-Life Alex or Oculus Rift games like Eskar's Wrath without cables and smoothly. You will need a few things though, which I will cover in this video. I will explain what you need and how to set up virtual desktop. This guide will work on both Quest 1 and Quest 2 by the way, but in the end, this video will talk about my Quest 2 impression on 90 hertz mode and Wi-Fi 6 support. Like, should you get that Wi-Fi 6 router for this thing or not? Let's find out. Hey everyone, I'm Cass, and if you'd like to see more videos like this one, then consider subscribing. And everything I mentioned in this video will be linked below as well. If you buy anything from our links, we will get a small referral fee, but it doesn't mean it will cost you anything more. It just helps support the channel a little. And now, join me beyond reality right after a message from today's video sponsor. Multiplayer virtual reality development with Unity by our friend Devic is an online course that includes eight and a half hours of video lessons about creating your own VR game with multiplayer. Devic teaches you Oculus Quest development, avatar selections, multiplayer synchronization and much much more. It's all explained in an easy to understand way so even if you're not a developer, you can do it. VR is getting more mainstream every day, so why not get ahead of the crowd by spending some time learning how to create your own game? I mean, who knows, we might even play your game one day. Currently, the course is on sale with our discount code, so if you're interested, check out the link in the description. For those who don't know Virtual Desktop, let's start with an introduction. This is an app that allows you to stream what you see on your PC to your Oculus Quest 2. So you can watch movies, browse the web, or play flat games on a giant virtual screen without any disturbances. But the best feature and the reason why most people get the app is that it allows you to play PC VR games on your Quest 1 and 2 wirelessly. The gameplay is streamed directly into your Quest headset and the app does some magic so your hands and head movements are all tracked as well. It's just like Oculus Link except you don't need the cable. It's like playing a native Quest game with good graphics and the same freedom. I've been using Virtual Desktop for quite a while already on Quest 1 and the quality is already very good. I mean, there is latency still, it is entirely playable if you got what it needs, that is. So the following is what you need to make it all work. Yes, you do need a VR-ready PC where you can run the games on. Then you need Virtual Desktop, this is a paid app that costs 20 US dollars and you can buy it from the Oculus Store. You also need the Virtual Desktop VR patch, you can find this patch on site Quest for free, so yes, that means you need to silo it, but don't worry if you don't know how, as I will explain that in just a bit. On your PC, you also need the Virtual Desktop Streamer app installed, which you can download for free. Lastly, it would be best if you also had an excellent 5 GHz Wi-Fi connection, so make sure your router supports that and that you have it turned on. This all sounds like more work than it is. It may be a bit of work initially, but after that it works like a charm and it's effortless to get started. So let's go through how to install this more in depth. The first thing to do is uh, getting a VR ready PC and that is something you have to do yourself. But once you have that, you just need to purchase virtual desktop on the Oculus store. I'll link it below. Then download and install it on your Oculus Quest headset. After that, you will need to sideload the virtual desktop VR patch. The easiest method is to sideload via SideQuest and if you don't know how to do that, first follow the steps in my how-to video that is for Quest 1 but it also works on Quest 2. I will link it below. You only need to follow steps 1 to 6 in that video. All my videos have timestamps for your convenience so you can click through the video until you get there. Once you've done that, you'll get to this screen where you have SideQuest loaded. I got my Oculus Quest 2 connected to my PC using the provided Oculus charging cable. Yes, that's a very short one, but here on SideQuest, search for Virtual Desktop VR Patch and then click Install to Headset at the top right. You can click on this icon right here to see the progress of the task. Once it says it's completed successfully, it's uh, done. 
Now install the virtual desktop streamer app by going to vrdesktop.net. Click the download button here and then install it on your PC. Now launch it and you will get this screen. Put down your Oculus Quest username here, this is important, and click save. Now it is ready to connect to your Oculus Quest. So you can grab your Quest 2 now, unplug it if you haven't yet, and you can launch the virtual desktop app from within the headset. It should show your computer now in the app and then you can connect to it. Just make sure your PC and headset are in the same Wi-Fi network or the same network. Now it will start streaming your PC desktop immediately. So it's kind of like you have a giant monitor screen, which is always nice. But if you open the menu now using the left controller menu button, you can launch Steam VR or use the games tab here to launch the VR games you have installed. So you can play the newly released The Walking Dead, Onslaught, A Little or Half-Life Alex, all completely wireless on your Quest 2 with good graphics. Virtual Desktop is a fantastic app, although what graphics you get will depend on your Wi-Fi connection. If you have a bad Wi-Fi connection, you won't get the same visual fidelity or get a lot of latency. So to make sure you get the best graphics you can, you should check the settings. If you open the menu again with the left controller button, you can go to the streaming settings. Here you can change your VR bitrate, frame rate and graphics quality. The max bitrate you can set will change automatically when you connect. But let's dive into the latest newest update first, the 90Hz support of the Quest 2. As you can see the developer already enabled 90Hz in his app and it is smooth. The difference between 72Hz to 90Hz is not that big, but it does make a difference. It all looks more like what we are used to on PC VR, and just having the option is great. In the settings, you can also choose for 60Hz, which may be nice for watching short movies, or 72, 80, and finally 90. But here's an important note, the VD developer told me that at launch, so October 13, Oculus may disable 90Hz for apps because apparently there is an issue with the Guardian software that doesn't quite work well with 90Hz yet. This means at launch you may not be able to use 90Hz yet in virtual desktop, us neither, however it will be re-enabled once Oculus allows it again. Once that happens an update will be available for virtual desktop and if you have it already then, all you need to do is to update it. But now let's dive a little deeper even, Oculus Quest 2 also has support for Wi-Fi 6. To clarify, it doesn't support Wi-Fi 6E, it supports Wi-Fi 6 without the E. But this means if you got a Wi-Fi 6 router, then you can get even better streaming quality. Back in the streaming settings, you can set the VR bitrate. The higher you can set it, the better the quality. So with my previous Wi-Fi 5 router, a very old router, I was able to get a maximum theoretical speed of 866 Mbps, which you can see at the top in the virtual desktop app. With my new router, I can get the theoretical speed of 1200 Mbps. This seems like a significant upgrade, but practically it's not going to get that high. It does help, like with my previous router, I was getting a VR bitrate of 118 Mbps and 30 ms latency. On my Wi-Fi 6 router, I was able to get a bitrate of 133 to 150 with around 30 to 32 ms latency. So it does help, but the practical difference is not as big. These bit rates may seem a bit low compared to what the router is capable of, but I can tell you it is already very good. I mean, that little extra is always nice, but the video quality is already excellent. I actually think the compression looks better with virtual desktop than Oculus Link in its current state. Pretty, pretty amazing. The latency of 30ms is neglectable, although in really fast paced games like Beat Saber on Expert Plus, you might see the latency more, like you see the controllers kind of dragging with you instead of it being one on one. However, I could play Expert songs without much trouble. I think with games like Half-Life Alex or Asgard's Wrath, where you don't need so much speed in your arms, it will work just fine. Talking to the developer, he also told me that people might be able to get 150 Mbps bitrate with a Wi-Fi 6 router, like my 
Mike from VR Oasis was able to, and the developer also said that he might be able to push it a little higher than that even, but he did say that anything above 150 Mbps would get diminishing returns as more data to send means higher latency. So even if you get higher bit rates, it might be better to play at a lower bit rate to avoid the higher latency. In the end, it will be up to you what settings you like the best. So should you get a Wi-Fi 6 router right now? Well, since that is about the maximum bitrate, I don't think a Wi-Fi 6 router is necessary. But I do have faith in the VD developer, so it's up to you if you want to be ready for it. I got the TP-Link Archer AX6000 by the way, which I'm pretty satisfied with. I will link it below in the description in case you are interested. And do I recommend virtual desktop? Well, if I wasn't clear already, yes I do. But of course, only if you got a good 5 GHz Wi-Fi connection and a VR-ready PC. Maybe if Oculus Link comes out of beta and the quality becomes better, I will reconsider what I'm going to say right now. But right now I prefer playing PC VR games wirelessly with virtual desktop. So I hope you enjoyed this info. Let me know if you're going to get a Wi-Fi 6 router for virtual desktop streaming with the Quest 2 and why. If you want to support the channel further, check out more videos on the screen right now. Don't forget to join our Quest 2 giveaway as well and spread the word as we're almost at 60k. Thank you guys so much. This means we are going to add the Elite Strap to the giveaway. So uh, don't forget to join it. A special thanks goes to all our champions, especially these patrons down below right now. And as always, VR on!